new signing Gianluca Bucci. Welcome back to Gainsborough. Thank you for having me. No problem. So it's been a strange year with the pandemic and everything going on. You started off impressing Curtis Woodhouse in pre-season, getting a deal, and then off to Frickley. How did you find that? Yeah, it was it was difficult. I think with uh, everything going on else in the world, I think uh, definitely for myself, I rely on football to be kind of the basis of what I do and try and uh, work really hard at that. So the way that it uh, was a bit of a roller coaster at the start of last season in terms of uh, what teams I was playing for uh, was difficult, but it was also challenging and it was a good challenge. So it meant that I had to adapt pretty quickly to the circumstances at Frickley and both teams were amazing during the times that I was there. So, yeah, I'm really grateful to both the managers there. Lots of experienced players and managers that you've been able to deal with in the last 12 months. How has that helped you develop as a player? Yeah, definitely. I mean, everyone appreciates the reputation of Curtis. He's obviously got such a great career behind him and he's such a great guy as well as a gaffer. And then um, Dave Frecklington at Frickley was amazing for me took me in, put his arm around my shoulder and was a really nice guy to me and really helped me adapt to a new changing room of people who were great as well. All the teammates were great, some great players that I met. And Damon Parkinson was there in an assistant manager capacity, be linking back up with him again? Yeah, I'm excited to be working with Damon. I think he's a really good coach, really great guy as well, like a really personable guy. Um I'm really looking forward to working with him. I think he's good. He, he really knows his stuff. And you get to link back up with Tom Shaw as well, who you worked with for three years, is it, previously? Yeah, so uh, two years during my scholarship and then over the past year with my, my uni team. So, uh, yeah, I'll be really looking forward to working with Tom. He's been a really big part of my development so far, so I'm really excited to work under him again. I think it'll be really good. I think that feeling's mutual and he's excited to bring the best out in you. Yeah, hopefully. I mean, he's he's worked with so many players already. He's he's obviously got an amazing career behind him as well. So uh, just hope to learn as much as I can from someone with the experience that he's got. So I'm really excited. So all in, really, it wasn't a difficult decision for you to make to come back to Gainsborough. No, I think I think it was a pretty easy decision based off the fact of uh, the way the club set up. I think it's got such an amazing, amazing foundation. I think the fans are amazing from the uh, pinch of what I saw them. They're, they're, they're a really good fan base and the whole setup, people around the club, uh, backroom staffs, everyone everyone seems really great 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 facilities too really good setup at the club so it was definitely not a tough decision it's just a countdown now isn't it so the season starting in the middle of august now and the longest pre-season on record <laughs> yeah i um to my knowledge there's a there's a cup over pre-season that we'll be involved in so i think that'll be a great uh start for the lads to get get their head down and get some work to It'd be good so, uh, good for motivation purposes. I think it'd be a really good opportunity for us to get together and get to know each other a lot better, get an idea and definitely win some games. Brilliant. Well, all we'll do now is 10 quick fire questions just to get to know you a little bit better. Some answers supporters might know already, but for the ones that don't know you, just to give that first impression. Starting off with the team that you support. I'm a diehard Chelsea fan. Dad's always been a fan, so big, big Chelsea fan. The best ground that you've played at? Uh, funny enough, when I was younger playing Sunday League, uh, we entered a competition and we actually got the opportunity to play at Stamford Bridge, so that's easily the best ground I've played at. Well, comes a close second to the North Home. I think, so. <laughs> close to the North Home. <laughs> your biggest influence on your career? Um, I've had some really good coaches uh, in the academy at uh, Lincoln City. Coaches like Sam Willett and Matt Halloran have been really big influences on me. And uh, even the experience that I've had with Tom and and Curtis as well. So they've all been really good coaches, to be fair. So they've probably been the biggest influences on me. Shows the sort of character that you are, that you learn from all the different coaches that you've had and you, you pick different things up from each one. 
absolutely yeah i think they've all got their own uh skills and it's good to just pick pick uh little things that i can learn from them and just take the most of it as i can yeah okay apart from in training and greg smith who's your toughest opponent <laughs> yeah there was definitely some good jewels of greg um toughest opponent uh I, funny enough i got the opportunity when i was playing for spalding to play against uh rico he was playing for uh i think it was ilkeston and he was playing in midfield at the time and i remember thinking that was a really good duel like he, he, he really gave me the run around so uh rico five is definitely up there i've had the good opportunity to play with some first team players at lincoln as well in some reserve games so yeah for um a handful of them they were amazing to watch brilliant looking at your boyhood hero <sighs> but it's probably my mum and dad to be honest like they've both um had different journeys and been really uh been really success successful in what they've done and it they're just amazing role models for me so i'd definitely say my mum and dad okay your funniest teammate Funniest teammate. I think that's probably a quite an easy one. I'd uh, probably have to go with Rod Orlando Young. He was uh, he was an absolute crack in the changing room. So he was an amazing character. Yeah, probably him. Okay. Have you got a claim to fame? Oh, this is tough. Uh, not not one off the top of my head. Um, just the opportunity to be on the same pitch as some people that are succeeding uh, right now. I think the opportunity to uh, go into some first team training sessions with the Carlies, those were amazing experiences. And then the, I'd probably say one up there is that like we had a game against Man United, a preseason game when I was under 15, I think, and uh, got the opportunity to play up against Mason Greenwood. He was, he was pretty impressive to, to see. So I'm going to use that one, I think. And marked him out of the game and didn't get a sniff. <laughs> no. <laughs> no way. Okay. Look at three items that you take with you to a desert island to stave off the boredom. Oh, that's a good one. I'd, uh, well, I think the first one's obvious is a football. I think that would definitely kill a lot of the time to be able to play a bit of football. Uh, mm, that is tough. Uh, I probably take a book. I like a good read. I'm a um, I like a mix of like fiction and non-fiction. So books probably up there, and um, yeah, probably my. F uh, I can't really say my phone. That's a bit. Uh, I, I'm not, all right. It, it, here's a good one. I've got. I'm practicing the guitar at the minute, so I'd probably take that just to get a little bit better at that. So yeah, probably a good guitar. It's my yeah. third choice. With nobody around you to. Are you playing? Okay. Leading on from that one, four people that you'd have around for dinner, living or dead. Okay. So I'm gonna stick to like football players that I think would be incredible to speak to. So um probably top of my list is probably uh someone like Perlo I think that would be a pretty cool person to sit down with and talk talk about all his experiences um off the back of that another great Italian player probably someone like Maldini and then as a big Chelsea fan I'd probably go with um someone like Drogba I think he'd be a great crack and then I I'd probably have to sit down with someone like Mourinho I think he'd definitely be up there I think he'd be amazing to have a chat with and listen to some of the stories he'd have to tell not a bad five-a-side team either Perlo, yeah, Maldini, Mourinho. <laughs> Definitely, I think we'd win. And Didier Drogba. Yeah. Brilliant. And just to finish, Luca, one prediction for the 21-22 season. Uh, just, I think, that um, just to have the enthusiasm and the optimism that we're going to win some games this year, I think it would be a really good opportunity. I've seen the way that things are starting to come into fruition and I think it's going to be a really good group of lads next year. The coaching staff seem really nice. I've had the opportunity to speak to most of them. They seem amazing. And I think just the 
uh, just a chance to win some games. I think we've got a really good opportunity to win some football matches. So, yeah, hopefully we do that and please the fans. And hopefully one that come May next year, we've actually got a complete season to look back on. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. Brilliant. Well, thank you for your time, Luca. Good no worries. It's been a pleasure.